Hi there, this is Adam with The Cloud Automation Blog, and in this video, I'm going to be going over System Center Orchestrator 2012, or as it's referred to now, Scorch, uh, that's S-C-O-R-C-H, and a high level of how the orchestrator works, and also a, a dive into a REST API call and, and how that works and how we pass variables and, and return that data from the REST API. So what we're looking at is the System Center Orchestrator Runbook Designer. The version I'm running is, is 2012 R2, uh, of Windows, it's the data center edition. And on the left, you can see the, uh, this is the actual server that I'm doing and then all of the runbooks. So these are some demos I've downloaded, but what we're looking at here is the Git weather. This is a folder. And then under the folder, all the actual runbooks would show up at the top. So if I click on a couple of these, maybe we can see that. No, it's not a good example. Let me go here, maybe publish data. There you go. So you can see 1.1.1 and 1.1.2. And then if there's other folders under that, that could contain more runbooks. The runbooks aren't actually listed here, just the folders themselves. So we're going to go back to Git Weather. And you see three items here on the canvas. So this is the canvas. And then on the right are the activities or the predefined uh, workflows, integrations, plugins. There's many different names, but they're more or less um, things that we can drag onto the canvas and utilize. So there's inputs and outputs, and there's some type of action usually tied with those. In this case, we're just using an, an initialized data item, the invoke rest service item and then a return data. So the invoke rest service piece here, we actually have to go to the right. You can see the rest heading here and then invoke rest service. I actually downloaded this from the Scorch community. If you search Google uh, for the Scorch community, you can download any of these. A couple of these, the Azure one I downloaded, um, the file management I downloaded. So this is what we'll be using in this example. So the initialized data is the inputs pretty much. And in this case, we're just doing a zip code and the type is integer. So if you wanted to add another one, you, you know, you could add or remove it. This is where you just declare those inputs. The invoke REST service is where the, uh, the, the fun stuff happens. So the HTTP version in this case has to be one or 1.1. 1 .1. The verb or the, the method, and the method is git, post, delete. There's a bunch of them. Um, in this case, we're gonna be doing a git. And the URL is what we'll be actually calling to. So you can see HTTP colon slash slash API dot open weather map dot org slash data slash 2.5 slash weather question mark zip code equals. And you can see the text is blue and it's within brackets. So how we do that is in that, if you look, it's a zip code from initialized data and that's being pulled from this initialized data over here, which the end user is inputting when this workflow kicks off. So what you do there is in your text, so you can just see where the cursor is at. I'm going to delete this. So yes, I do want to delete it. So you can see it says zip equals, and obviously the zip is missing. You could just put 90210. But what we want to do is actually right click right where you're at, where that is, do a subscribe. And you want to go to publish data. And you can see here activity. So based if there was 10 or 15 activities, let's say it was a much larger workflow with a bunch of inputs and outputs, you could select the activity um, with that input or output it. But in this case, there's just the one. So you want to select zip code, you want to click OK, and you'll see it's populated there. The rest of the data in this is this is the country so comma us is still part of the zip code the app id is the unique identifier and then the actual units are imperial versus celsius or kelvin so click finish and now what we can do is we can actually execute this this run the return data is just the last step if you actually want to return data to a you know to another workflow if this was being called in a, in a larger workflow in this case it is not so i want to click the runbook tester this is more or less the debugger for scorch so click run book tester, let that load, click run. So again, that prompt, it's prompting the end user or it's prompting the, the workflow that would be calling this workflow for the zip code. So we're gonna enter 90210, click okay. And it's going to execute that workflow. And you can see the activities down here. So there's three items here. There's three green check marks. That's, that's good, that means they all succeeded. Really the only one that's gonna have any useful data, the initialized data is very straightforward. It's just gonna show us that, hey, the end user did input the zip code, but the actual REST service itself is where we get all that information. So you, you can see the Git version 1.1, the URL will be here, but what's real important is that return data. So the response header, and then really the message body, which has all the information that we could then parse. So the temperature, clear sky, the actual city. So if I scroll all the way to the end here, you can see it says, you know, the city is Beverly Hills. I hope that helped give you a better idea of how to execute a HTTP REST API call within Scorch. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a great day.